Everybody muted. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, here we are. Welcome to Unity Spiritual Center of Panama City on May the 30th, Memorial Day weekend. So great to see all of you here with us today. We all know each other very well. So yeah, everybody. So uh, uh, every Sunday, it seems like I'm kind of repetitive because I uh, can't believe the date. And as I write down these dates and prepare for this, I can't believe it's uh, May the 30th. So uh, that's uh, hard to believe for me. Uh, so let's uh, get started in this service. Well, the PowerPoint, there it goes. So here's the, the service today is May the 30th, uh, Memorial Day weekend. Uh, it keeps jumping here, hold on. And uh, I think I, if you noticed in the email I sent out this week, it's, uh, uh, we're gonna listen to, uh, we're gonna listen to a recording that Martha Creek, a service that she did uh, just a couple, uh, I think two months ago. Um, uh, but I listened to it. I had asked Martha to join us uh, live and she was busy. She'd already had a commitment and I think some personal things she's moving her, uh, she's moving to a different house in Nashville. She lives in Nashville now. So she's actually moving over this weekend. So, but the title of the talk today is uh, very interesting. If you didn't notice it in the emails, uh, eight W's wishy washing, uh, working will work when wishy washing, wishing will not. I've been waiting for a week to say it took a couple weeks to say that. So, uh, so it's going to be a good service today and we're very close and very intimate. So we'll just, uh, we'll go through here. We'll do this as much for the people on Facebook and that we'll watch later on YouTube as well. So first let's get started with a song uh, with by Faith Rivera and Harold Payne called Stand Together. One heart, one world, stand together, one dream, 
that song to me has a lot of meaning today. Let's all stand together, right? That's what we need to be doing. So let's pause a minute and say and realize this um, and contemplate this uh, uh, statement by uh, Master Eckhart that we say every week, but it's so important. If the only prayer you said in your life, in your whole life, was thank you, that would suffice. And we know that's the truth about our beingness in this place. You know, I, I keep quoting this uh, this statement that we learned uh, in when when we did the course with the uh, uh, Billy Fingers, uh, the afterlife of Billy Fingers, is that it's easier to say thank you than it is sometimes to be grateful. So th saying thank you is so important. It puts us in that mode of gratitude. So let's remember to say thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, today we say thank you, especially for um, honoring um, the following uh, people uh, from the, our military service who have fought and died for our freedoms. Uh, that almost seems uh, minimalistic to say it that way, but uh, Barack Obama said our nation owes a debt to its fallen heroes that can never fully be repaid, uh, that we can never fully repay. So as we go to prayer this morning and, and say this uh, prayer of thank you, we're thanking these the people that who have um, fallen for our country. So let's pray. We know that God is a love that has no end and a power that knows no bounds. God's healing power, divine life and love and is restoring and healing and revitalizing our world in this moment. We let go of any fears or anxieties. We affirm that all are safe, healthy and protected. We bless though all those who support us in maintaining vibrant, radiant health. We celebrate all, the work of all who seek to promote social justice in our country. We pray for guidance and wisdom as we seek to do what is ours to do. We express divine life in all we think, say, and do. We bless our global family with radiant health, peace of mind, abundant love, and a desire to seek and know peace throughout the world. And finally, we celebrate the uh, allness that we are an eachness in the allness of God. We celebrate the awareness that we are an eachness in the allness of God. And so it is, amen. So um, I, every week we, we're looking to explain what is unity in case you're just uh, passing by this on YouTube or on Facebook. Um, uh, we're sometimes some people call this spiritual but not religious. Um, there's a mix of that because we are to the definition of a religion because we get together. We don't have a lot of we don't have any really creeds or uh, credos or doctrine. I mean dogma or anything like that. And yet we do get together as a spiritual community. Uh, if if that's what is defined as a um, as a religion because we are seeking and open to and accepting all faiths, we encourage individuals and families and people of all belief systems to join us and uh, find their own divinity and seek the way. I heard somebody say this week, I was talking to that said, unity is a place where everyone can feel at home. And we truly hope that that is what we create here as we inspire and empower each other and others for personal transformation. Whoops. And one of the one of the big uh, guiding uh, principles in our practice in this spiritual community and unity is the five principles. And I encourage you to go. Uh, you can go online. There's uh, uh, all kinds of books about these. The five principles: one presence, one power. We're all divine. We're co-creators with God because our thinking uh, determines our reality. We pray affirmatively, and it's a little different than normal prayer. Uh, we align our heart mind with God uh, and thoughts, words, and actions are not enough. We must live the truth that we believe and teach. I'm looking to see who doesn't have their mic uh, muted. There it is. Uh, Nancy, Nancy, I've just muted you. So welcome to everybody who's uh, joined in. Kathy, Nancy, others have joined us and those who are joining us on Facebook. So welcome. So 
So we're uh, continuing to promote um, or join with, that's not really promote, we're, we're joining with AGNT uh, Association for Global New Thought in their uh, season for nonviolence. Uh, you can go onto their website, it's down here in the blue, uh, AGNT Today, season for nonviolence. This is the 24th annual uh, event of this where they have celebrated the season for nonviolence. And we continue to celebrate and honor this with them. Um, so at, before we go into uh, announcements, again, it's uh, Memorial Day. We want to remember that today is the American holiday observed on the last day of May, honoring the men and women who died while serving in the military who have fallen. So um, this is a day where we remember the fallen and, uh, and we really do. It's, uh, it's pretty humbling to think about this, to think of what this means. Um, it's not just about you know picnics and going to the beach today, going to Shell Island. My neighbors told me late last night they were going to Shell Island today in their boat. And while it's it is for all that uh, the, to be together and to celebrate, it is it is to remember uh, why we're really here, and that's the reason is that it's to observe the the uh, men and women who have uh, fallen in, in service to our country. So a few of these, I found a few of these uh, quotes that are just uh, so great. Uh, about helping us to remember this. Our nation owes a debt to its fallen heroes that we can never fully repay. Barack Obama, it doesn't take a hero to order men into battle. It takes a hero to be one of those men who goes into battle. Uh, Norman uh, uh, Schwarzkopf uh, said that, and you can imagine him. He was a pretty gruff guy, but that's, that is the truth right there. And as a general in the army, you can uh, appreciate that. Um, and Patton, uh, same way, This I thought this just almost stark in a way. It is foolish and wrong to mourn the men who died. Rather, we should thank God such men lived. And of course, we can say men and women. Uh, that, is, that is just so profound to me. Uh, rather, we should thank uh, th these men, who, men and women uh, who lived uh, in service of their country. So um, we're still uh, doing the Zoom uh, things, uh, activities this week. Uh, this will be true all week, uh, Tuesday, uh, ACIM with uh, Rose and, and crew. Thank you, Rose. Uh, and Wednesday, we'll do coffee and chat. We'll go ahead and do it this morning. The attendance of that is going down. So we'll start watching that if that doesn't, uh, if it doesn't serve a need. The, the reason, obviously, remember, well, while we did that was back when we started this right after the pandemic. I think I, I can speak for myself. It felt like my hair was on fire and maybe yours too. So we, uh, we just did this together to uh, have a place of release. And Thursday is meditation. So, uh, and we're gonna continue doing these on Zoom for a while, at least for the foreseeable future. future. Okay, the big announcement for next week uh, this coming week is Sunday, June the 6th, next week, in-person service, noon at Temple B'nai Israel. So we are going to limit the number of people come. So the email that I sent you this morning um, asked you to reply to that email. If you didn't get the email, if you're on this call or if you're watching on Zoom, if you didn't get it, I mean, watching on uh, Facebook or later on YouTube, if you didn't get the email, uh, let me know um, and I'll, I'll send you a copy of it. Becky, I know, Becky and I talked she forwarded it to the women of unity because some of the some of the people that were on her list were not on my list that I sent out. And we are going to limit the uh, number of attendees so that we can maintain social distancing. So it's important that you just reply uh, to the email. And I've already got several uh, replies already this morning. So thank you for that. And then I would advise you to uh, just be patient. Um, this will be a learning experience for all of us as we gather together in a different way. Um, we'll adjust the guidelines as we proceed. Uh, there's no doubt that it may be every week. It may be uh, that we change something, but uh, look at the guidelines in the email. And if you have any questions or concerns or just need to talk about them, call me uh, or anybody on the board, Becky, Becky, Bob, Bill, Brian, you can call any of us to, uh, to talk about your concerns. And we'll give you more details uh, in the MailChimp that'll go out. We'll get that out early this week so you can. Uh, and again, the big thing is that uh, the service will be at noon at Temple Benet, and it will be at noon on Facebook, not at 11. And that'll be in an email that will follow. 
So uh, grateful to each of you for your continued giving from your heart. You know, I say we should, all of us should pray, go within, find what is ours to do as far as our time, talent, and treasure, and uh, give what you, what you are led to give. And we hope you'll continue to give to this spiritual community because we, we're grateful and humbled and need your support. Um, again, you can go online at, uh, and click the donate button, or you can send your, your donation through the mail at this, at our address, our PO box. So thank you. So let's put your hands together and let's bless our offerings that we receive because we're so grateful for these. As we say the blessing, divine love flowing through me, blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give and all that I receive. And so it is. Let us pray with you during this week, whatever the occasion may be, if you have a need for prayer, uh, you can uh, send your uh, send your request directly to Silent Unity uh, at this phone number, or you can send it online. Uh, there's an app that you can get on your phone to send your prayer request in. You can go onto our uh, uh, the Unity of uh, Panama City website and uh, and find a, a link there to get directly uh, to put your prayer request in. You can call me, call Becky, uh, if you have any request, and we'll pray over them here, and then we send them to Silent Unity, uh, where they're held in prayer for 30 days at Silent Unity. So please let us pray with you if you have um, a joy, celebration, concern, whatever it is, let us pray with you. Thank you. So uh, today I'm going to read the um, read the daily word, and it's a little different. Uh, uh, well, it is today. Sometimes we'll pick a different daily word to uh, align with the service. Today, this is right from today's daily word. And I thought it was so, so appropriate with what we're trying to do with or what we celebrate now with uh, with ourselves uh, for all this, you know, thinking about the COVID and the times of change. There's, you know, still a lot of change going on in our society and in our individual lives. So here's where we, here's what we, uh, here's what we pray today through the, uh, you know, through the uh, daily word that we get this. Peace grows within me as I remain centered in God. Peace grows within me as I remain centered in God. Inner peace, the peace of God that my words can only begin to describe does not depend on outer circumstances. Peace does not come from any external source. It arises from within me. At a place in consciousness, some, sometimes called the center of my being, peace, like all the qualities of God, waits for me to recognize and claim it. I claim inner peace when I remember the truth that God's presence is always with me and within me. As I, as I center my awareness in the divine presence within, peace soothes my feelings and restores order to my thoughts. I move through all circumstances with calm assurance. Peace grows within me as I remain centered in God. Every event in my day contributes to the peace of my soul. Peace grows within me as I remain centered. Please affirm that with me. Peace grows within me as I remain centered in God. One more time. Peace grows within me as I remain centered in God. And so it is. So I mentioned at the opening of the service, we're going to have Martha Creek uh, with us. Uh, for, to, uh, we're going to hear this uh, video that uh, uh, that she did in a service uh, two months ago, I think it was. Uh, but it just is so attractive. Eight W's. Uh, working will work when wishy-washing, wishy-washy, wishing will not. Okay, at the end of the service, every one of you is going to say that uh, three times real fast. But it's real. It's really uh, uh, timely for what what you'll see, and it's definitely Martha Creek. So, without further ado, let me uh, let me get to this and just start this video so that we can uh, share Martha. Everybody, there's so. Let me say one thing first. She does a meditation at the very end, a short meditation at the end. So that's why I didn't do one this uh, at the at the beginning of her talk. So she'll do one at the very end of this. Here we go. So much um, that I want to share today, and that prayer, like 
sums it up really. You know, when I think about um, how we're going to be, and I was listening to this organization this, this week, a talk that came through them called Braver Angels. And it's in the chat, braverangels.org. And their mission statement is to keep America together. And they bring people with different viewpoints. They bring people with different opinions, very passionate opinions, very different sides of the aisle, very different visions, missions, very different belief systems together to have civil discourse and to share and to lean toward the middle of understanding where the other is coming from and how the others think. And in that um, talk that I heard from them, I got this title from this talk today. So that's the source of it, which is eight W's, working will work when wishy-washy wishing won't, something like that. So it's time as I think about today and the birthday of Martin Luther King and other leaders, whoever that leader has been for you, Mother Teresa or, or Jesus or Buddha or whoever you believe has been a leader that said, there's a different way to be with this, that we call on that today. So as we listen today, I'm listening. I encourage you to listen as this is a, 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 the message from on high that use, use me, God, use me. And then and for you, show me, show us, show each and every one of us hearing this message, how I am to take who I am exactly as I am, who I want to be, who I effort to be, who I long to be, who I desire to be, and what I can do, what I can actually factually do and use it and use it for a purpose greater than myself, to use it for a purpose greater than my own limited egoic wants and needs and shoulds and shouldn'ts. And I remember in doing talks on this Sunday over the years of Dr. Martin Luther King was shown one day and it's, it's in the history and in the videos and things I'm sure that somebody actually spit on him, literally spit on him. And he took his handkerchief out of his jacket pocket and wiped it off of his face and said, this belongs to you. So how might you have reacted? How do animals react when they're frustrated, irritated, upset, put out, offended, affronted? And that very reactivity, reacting to other people's reactions keeps us bound in the same behaviors that have been in place since the beginning of creation, a very animalistic, regressive response, reactivity. So I have a sense of the struggle, the struggling, and many of you pray every day, a prayer for protection or the serenity prayer for many of us, to accept the things I cannot change. And right now that is terrifying for many and even debilitating for some. So with thoughts and images and news and media about what is happening, could happen, might happen, it's very then alluring, very normal, very natural to fall under the spell of those images and of that of, a, that of an imagined future instead of it's the highest time ever for me to go in, to actually apply if I believe this, there's one power and one presence in the universe, whether I can see how this is 
part of that or not. I'm going to lean toward that, that even though I cannot understand how or why this is happening or why it must, I know that it is. This is what is. So then how can I be with that differently? And while everything is so alluring to be mad at something, mad at something, this ain't going right, that ain't going right, they're not getting that out fast enough, I couldn't get one, the system was blocked, why I bother? So this serenity that we're calling for, this serenity that we pray for, this serenity that we claim we want, it's not being withheld from us. And it's closer than our hands and our feet, which doesn't mean that I won't take action, that I won't do something, and then, then I'll do what I can. To accept what I cannot change, then change what I can, and then work. Working will work when wishy-washy wishing won't. So it may be to go for a walk. It may be to do something intentionally to calm me down, to clear me, to get me back to a center, to get up off the sofa, up off out of the chair and to say, what can I do today? I can water plants so they won't die. I can feed birds when I notice all the berries are now gone off the tree. I can reach out to somebody. I can write a note, a text, an email that is thoughtful, caring, in presence. I can tune out of Twitter and unhook from all of that ambush and avalanche of feelings that's created from reading it, whatever the social media is that jacks me up, that gets me more anxious, more tense, more mad, more frustrated, more annoyed. So I can work, I can work to see and understand, wait a minute, this is, effects of somebody trying to be a hero what's it like in me where am i trying to be a hero let me work there let me heal that let me do something there so get a sense of it in your own life that there's something you could work at that empowers you, that leaves you feeling better. And it may be praying. People still ask me, Martha, do you still pray? Like, you know, I hear you say you're living in harmony with the way things are. It's like, well, I'm not in harmony. I'm not in harmony most of the time. But I am aware when I'm not in harmony and I am seeing what's causing me not to be in harmony. And then I'm returning to living in harmony as quick as I possibly can for my sake and for the sake of the good of the order, for the sake of the whole that says, if you believe in quantum theory, anything I'm doing today is affecting that. So the matter I get, the more mad I've put on it, the more offended I get, the more offense I've put on it, the more disgusted I get, the more disgust I've put on it. So it's vital, critical, essential, the way you speak, the way I speak, the words we use, the tone of the words we use, the feelings we project, the ideas that we hold, the prayers that we pray and speak. So it matters. You matter. Your contributions matter. And then it's an awakening then to see, okay, what, what am I contributing? What today, what did I actually contribute today? 
And then minus the shame and minus the guilt, please. I mean, have you had enough shame to last you the rest of your lives? Can I have a group and a collective global amen? Enough shame to last us the rest of our lives and enough guilt to last up the rest of our lives to say that I can look back on my today. I can look back on my yesterday and say, okay, how can I be informed by that? How can I be informed by today to say there's another way? There's another way. Like somebody came to my mind that I didn't reach out to, that I didn't call or text or email to uplift. So I'm going to be looking today like a researcher to see where can I contribute? Where can I serve? Where can I be the wind beneath somebody's wings? Where can I provide an uplift for someone's emotion? Where can I uplift my own? How can I quickly, quickly interrupt these old patterns of offense and affronted and blaming and shaming and guilting and and fault finding and nitpicking and whatever else is the allure of that old old painful archaic way to say okay i'm going to um, do something different today i'm going to interrupt this whatever whatever it takes i'm going to interrupt this and i'm going to do it for my sake and I'm going to do it for the sake of my own soul's progression. And I'm going to do it for the sake of conscious evolution. And it's going to require me to circuit break some of this. It's going to require me to interrupt the old pattern. And then to think about then and to stop using some of these terms that we've grown to use um in our ministries in our churches like people that are suffering people that have dying families and in intensive cares do not want to hear it's all good and neither would you if you told the truth so it's going to be important then for us to take down some of these platitudes and some of these ways that we have of trying to feel better ourselves and to see that it's not effective. And then to go back to some grassroots efforts here of how am I going to make a difference? And I've got a, if I have a hundred more years to live or one more year to live or one 10 minutes to live, how would you want that to be for you? Because we're going to be on our deathbed looking back going, oh, my goodness, I wish I had of. Or I'm really glad I did. And many of you have heard me say it. You know, we'll be there with our tombstones. And on Martha Creek's headstone, it'll say, here lies Martha. Boy, she was mad. <laughs> here lies Martha. Now, girl, that girl was angry. Here lies Martha. She had issues. Here lies Martha. She had dramas. Here's had Martha. She took resentments to her grave. Here lies Martha. She preached unforgiveness and didn't offer any of it. Whoa, like, okay. If we're writing our headstone today, then it can say something different. Here lies Martha. Instead of issues, she had ideas. Here lies Martha. Instead of complaints, she had contributions. If we simply stop complaining, whoa, what would we talk about if we stopped complaining? Where would our energy go today? So in Sierra lies Martha, who didn't have, she dropped some of those dramas and she took those dreams and put them into action. So whatever you want your tombstone to say, we're writing it today, today. So whatever that is for you to think about today in this working will work to, if we had more passion for what we're about, passion for a mission on earth, passion, and then directing that passion. And, and it can be small things that make a big difference. 
But I found some website where teachers were trying to get their little classroom projects funded. And for $200, I cleared the board of 11 or 12 teachers. So their wishes and their projects all got settled just like that. One little, like a, in two or three keystrokes, a passion, a mission that I am to serve those who are serving, to send meals to hospitals, gas cards to hospital employees, anything to whatever, whatever. And then, so whatever your passion is to fuel that passion, to be in integrity with yourself, to say, I can't have that passion. I can't have that fire in my belly and not, not do something about it, move forward and to move, to move toward, toward that, whatever that is for you. So it's not, yours is not Martha Kreeves. Mine is mine. Yours is yours. So what, what would it be like to get in deep, deep connection and deep, deep con integrity to your own passion and your own ideas for how you want to uh, uplift humanity, uplift the consciousness of humanity, especially during these times. And then the second thing I wrote down was, so that's like ignite our passion, spark our passion, and then exude it, exude it. Um, I got to hear um, many speakers over the years and many, many teachers and Matthew Fox, I got to be with him and study some and work. And he used to say, you know what people need, particularly you spiritual types who are so uptight, you know, mama used to say, you're so uptight and you could screw you in the ground, you're so uptight. And he said, what was missing is some frolic, some frolic, exude some passion, whatever it is, and this much passion right now, this much fire in your belly right now could ignite a passion and a fire for others that really, really, really makes the difference. The second thing I wrote down is cut the weird. <laughs> Some of us are proud about how weird we are. Um, so what, I, what it means to me is to cut out some of this weirdness that people can't relate to. Like we want them to come in to, to, to know God deeper, to have to a deeper realization of God, to come into whatever principles they're working with. If it's unity principles, like there's one power and one presence, I am that I am, and prayer and meditation connect me to that. And the last part of that principle is I must apply it. So just to theoretically speak that is weird. So nobody's listening much to what we're saying. They're watching how we're being. They're watching what we're doing. And only through that will there be an attraction to say, oh, well, I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of that passion. I want to be a part of that miracle making. I want to be a part of uplifting somebody's life. I want to be a part of creating a life that I can look back at the end of mine and say, I'm proud of that. I, I worked at that. So whatever the weird is, and it's weird to say it's all good. It's another thing to say it's all good. And it's another thing entirely to embody it. So, you know, Gandhi used to say, um, people would, some, there's a story about some mother bringing their child to Gandhi and saying, tell this kid not to eat sugar. And she had walked miles and miles barefooted in the desert to get there. And he said, well, I can't tell the child not to eat sugar. Bring, come back in two weeks. And she said, do you realize how far I've walked? Do you realize how much it took me to get here? Can't you just tell him? And he said, no, I cannot tell him. Bring him back in two weeks, I'll tell him. He came back in two weeks. She came back in two weeks with this little kid and said, Gandhi, tell him not to eat sugar. And Gandhi said, don't eat sugar. She said, well, why in the world would you just tell him that two weeks ago when I was here? And he said, because I was still eating sugar. <laughs> so it would be out of integrity for me to tell folks to stop doing what I'm doing. So it's out of integrity for me to tell people not to be mad and outraged and enraged when I'm outraged at their outrage. 
And when I'm enraged at their rage and mad about them being mad. So whatever seems weird to you, cut it out. <laughs> and expand your vision. Our leaders, we're all leaders. So how are we leading? And you are the hope of the world. Charles Phil Morse used to say it as, you may be the only church anybody ever attends. So what is your message? And then through doing this, we're encouraging people to fall in love with mission, whatever that mission is. Mine is to serve those who serve. So then what I do is informed by that. So whatever your mission is, whatever you want your tombstone to say, it could be music, art, it could be the way you are with your children and your grandchildren, the way you are with your pets. Like what is your mission? How is it you'd want to be noticed? How will you notice that? And then the hardest one for this week, here it comes. Smile more. Smile on purpose. It sounds so trivial, but if you start to look around, you will see the world has lost its smile. So those of us who can, can give the world its smile back. If the gospel creation, God, source, whatever you call it, is true. There is something to smile about. Whether we can see it or not, there is something to smile about. And I have to remind myself, even in communication, particularly when there's tension and anxiety and worry, to practice smiling. Smile more. And have you noticed it's not a natural facial expression? We're patterned. <laughs> We're patterned for the downturn. So it's going to mean growing some new muscles here for some of us. The sixth one is to stop fighting. Stop fighting. Whoever you're fighting with, put the rope down. They'll think you're on a new medication or that you started meditating again for your sake, for the sake of the collective, for the sake of consciousness, stop fighting. And invite someone to something that you like. Invite them to join a, a ministry service. Invite them to your coffee chats. Invite them to a book study. Invite them to card writing. Invite them to board games. Invite somebody that's excluded, that's isolated, that's feeling alone, that's desperate, despair, de depressed. Invite and dial up your invitation because, oh my God, well, I invited so-and-so to church 10 years ago. It's like, mm-hmm. And there's been several hundred thousand days since then. And then to become friendlier, to become friendlier with people who aren't necessarily like you who don't think like you, who don't look like you, who don't behave like you, do not believe like you. You don't have to hang out with them. I don't either. And to get at least friendlier toward them. So working will work when wishy-washy, wishy won't. What will you work with today? What will you work at today? So as we go to meditation, I invite you to think about what you've heard and what you've relearned today. There's nothing I can teach you. 
There's something I can spark in you. There's something that, that can't be taught that can be caught. So what did you catch today? As we go into this time of meditation to be aware that this is our integrative process. A time to integrate the teaching. So we use, use me, God, use us, God, use us. Use the words, use the music, use the art, use the expression, use the frolic, use the smile, use the dreams, use the actions, use the work. Show us, show us clearly, directly, spontaneously, and consistently show us who we are, what is true. And show us how to take who we are. I am who they are, who I want to be and who they want to be, who humans actually want to be. and what I can do. And we devote then ourselves, our mind, our heart, this upper room of our mind, our passion, our dreams, our ideas, our missions to be used for this holy, holy purpose. a purpose greater than ourselves. A purpose that grows us. I take a big deep breath. and get a sense of the power that is innate within you. The power to choose. The power to decide. The power to choose again. We give thanks for inherent power, for innate power. We give thanks for the light and the love and the presence of God in us, expressing as us and through us and using us for conscious, conscious evolution. We begin again today, older, braver, more passionate, more focused, more intent, more intentional, less weird, in service, and creating a world that works for all. So be it. So it is. Amen. So it is. Thank you, Martha. Ooh. I was thinking as she was talking, Becky usually always takes notes through uh, through these talks that we listen. You were busy taking notes because there was a lots of gems and, and I saw Pat doing that too. So lots of words of wisdom uh, for the eight W's from Martha Creek today. So a little different than what we've done before, but uh, that, that spoke to me. And I, I think this is the third time I've listened to the to this particular video because I always glean something else out of it. So we'll share about that in just a minute after, after we stop the recording, after we finish the service. 
Um, but next, I want to offer to you this, uh, as we close, uh, I'll offer this uh, blessing to you. This is the prayer of truth. And I offer this to you. And I invite you to hold your hands up, put your hand on your heart, and receive this blessing. As the light of God, you shine. As the love of God, you embrace. As the power of God, you stand in truth. As the presence of God, you radiate love. Wherever you are, God is, and all is well. And so it is. Amen. Let me find the meeting controls here.